you, City Council. Uh, Cameron Ranch Foundation Annual Report. I think we've got an experience this evening. We're going to see a little presentation. I've seen it, and it's, great, it's really a good report. Well, you'll have to wait just a moment. I didn't bring any popcorn either. So, <laughs> good evening, Honorable Mayor, Council <laughs> Members. My name is Charles Devlin. I'm the president of the Camarillo Ranch Foundation. I bought, brought some posse members. With <laughs> me I see them. <laughs> the back. So, when we go to questions, uh, if you stump me, I'm sure one of them will be able to take care of it. Uh, some of you know I have two other Camarillo-based businesses that I serve as chief executive. So when I was approached over just about a year ago to serve as foundation president, I was taken aback, but I <laughs> reluctantly agreed to serve for a one-year term with the proviso that I would run it like a business. We would focus on delivering high-quality services as well as the bottom line. Tonight, I'm pleased to report that significant improvements in the financial performance of the foundation were achieved last year, and we are on track this year mm -hmm. to see achieve additional improvements. Furthermore, the board and staff mm -hmm. have been working diligently to improve internal controls, implement checks and balances, and put in place best business practices in order to ensure that the ranch is a well-run social enterprise that protects the city's investment in the historical home of one of the city's founders. We have a very brief video that I'd like to show you at this time, and then I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. at 16 years of age, assumed the responsibility of running the ranch. The landmark Camarillo Ranch House was constructed in 1892. Three very large trees surround the house. A favorite tree for climbing is the Moreton Bay Fig. There is a Norfolk Pine and a Bunya Bunya Pine, which is a distinct landmark at the ranch. Adolfo Camarillo was an avid horseman. He purchased his beloved white horse, Sultan, in 1920 for $500. This was a very large amount of money back then, and as Mr. Camarillo said years later, it was the best deal he ever made. Thus began the legacy of the Camarillo White Horses. During your school field trip to the ranch, you'll get a hands-on opportunity to work in the kitchen and make your very own butter from cream. Discover how the Camarillo family made their own tortillas and created dishes from vegetables and livestock that were grown on the ranch. You will see the tools that were used to prepare family meals long before electric appliances like toasters, blenders, and refrigerators were even invented. Lima beans were a large part of the agricultural foods grown on the ranch. On your school field trip, you will plant your own lima bean seeds that will grow in the garden. When you visit the stable, you will see where the white horses like Sultan were housed when they were not grazing on the ranch property. 
Hay for the horses, mules, and other grazing animals was stored in the barn. Learn how the blacksmith made farm tools and horseshoes. You will even get to hold a real livestock branding iron and hone your cowboy skills with your schoolmates by roping a bull. <laughs> Your tour guides will show and demonstrate the tools used on the ranch daily to build, operate, and maintain the working ranch. This included fixing fences, repairs on the house, barn, and tools used for crop cultivation. In addition to lima beans and other food crops raised on the ranch were walnut, fruit, and citrus trees, like oranges and lemons. Avocado trees, oats, and hay were also farmed. As you visit the herb garden, you'll find rosemary, lemon verbena, and thyme, among others. Rose bushes and lamb's ear also adorn the property with their beauty and fragrance. As your tour continues into the main ranch house, you'll discover that there was no electricity in the home. Only gas fixtures and candles to provide light during the evening hours in the parlor and throughout the home. Upon entering the ranch office, you will see a large diorama and get a sense of ranch life during the early 1900s. A display of the decorative saddles used on the Camarillo White Horses are shown in glorious detail. Bedrooms and other living spaces remain frozen in time as they would have looked during the Camarillo family's many years in residence. Adolfo and his wife Isabel raised five children in the house. You will gain insight about the clothing the children wore, the toys that entertained them, along with the responsibilities and chores the children had on the working ranch. Visitors of all ages will come away with a glimpse into the 19th century ranch and farming life through the beautiful grounds and gardens, intriguing exhibits, and hands-on activities. You will experience a trip back in time when rural life established our character, our community, and our sense of purpose here in Ventura County. We look forward to your upcoming visit here to Camarillo Ranch. Could we ask him to tell us who the intended audience is for this and how it's used? Certainly. Well, we wanted to prepare something so that as we go out into the community about the ranch and the foundation, uh, we can give something visual. And so uh, target audiences might be a Rotary or the service club or other activity-based groups such as that. You can also send it over the internet to groups and other travel agencies and things of that nature to pull People here from Bakersfield and other places. Right. I, uh, Nikki, do we have it on the website yet? I know we had planned to put it on our website, but I'm not sure whether there's a link on or not. This particular video actually is specifically for school tours because as an adult, you won't get to do the roping and the other activities that are mentioned there. You don't get to churn your own butter either. So this is something that we would be sending to um, students, uh, for teachers in advance of a school tour coming to the ranch, and then they would kind of have a more robust experience when they came. Will you also be sending it, like I say, to other travel agencies and other things to promote? We have it up on our Vimeo channel at the moment, and eventually we'll get it up onto our website Great. as well. Great. By the way, Mayor Morgan, if um, roping that steer or bull sounded too scary, we also, as an alternative, we have a cow you can milk. <laughs> I was born on a ranch in Texas, and at 10 years old, we were practicing throwing those ropes from a horse. <laughs> so not to me. <laughs> I questions? noted in the report in the packet that you are doing much better financially this year, and we appreciate that. that. Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm very focused on that. I'm glad to see that because I, on the board we see it, and we know it's going the right direction. Uh, and we see the uh, future events coming up or future being lined up, and we'll still stay ahead of the game. So we appreciate what you guys are doing, really do. As a, as a board, I think I can speak for everyone saying we really are proud of you. Yes. 
Go ahead, Jan. Oh, I just have some questions. If, Go ahead. I have some financial questions, so I don't know if you're the person to ask, answer those or. Well, if you would allow me, I would, uh, I would invite our treasurer to come <laughs> forward, okay. Mr. Yep. Daly. Yep. Now, here's a true banker, folks. <laughs> My question has to do, you, you presented us with um, some financials um, and it kind of brought up some questions to me. Do you have a, a, a bookkeeper or do you all keep, keep the books yourselves or? We do have a bookkeeper. Her name is Heather Olson. Heather's been with the foundation okay. since okay. it was formed. Okay. And what kind of caught my attention is, is you've given us a balance sheet that's dated April the 17th and you've given us a P&L dated April the 20th, which is kind of odd that you would cut off in the middle of the month anyway. And I'm just kind of wondering what it is that you, you are giving us in comparison to what we, the last time we saw anything, it was your audited financial statement dated June the 30th. Um, I noticed looking at that, that you're on the accrual basis, yet I see no AR or AP reflected on your books. So you need to tell me a little bit about how you're actually handling your accounting to make me feel comfortable. We don't have any really accounts payable because we pay weekly. Okay. So there's no accrued accounts payable right. on that. Good. And then any receivables come out are deposited directly into the bank, so there are no receivables. There are deposits that we receive, and they're on the balance sheet for okay. uh, weddings and things. We get a percentage, 50% 50, uh, 50 up front, and then the balance has to be paid 90 days prior to the event. So when you say you have no receivables, so then everyone, they put down a deposit, and they have to pay before they have their event? They pay 50% up front, uh -huh. and then on the balance sheet, we have... Uh, Right there. So I understand you, you told me how you handled cash, but not necessarily how, how you handle the receivable. The, the, so they have to pay before they have the, the event? Yes, 90 days. Uh, the, it's paid in full 90 days before the event happens. Oh, okay. So they don't have, if they don't pay, they don't have an event? Correct. Even a deposit, okay. Correct. Okay. And that would be true of all events, whether they're weddings or absolutely school trips or whatever it might be? Okay. Yes, ma'am. The only thing I might ask in the future is we, we pick a date and, and use that date to run your reports and preferably at the end of a month when we know that things have been reconciled. You normally wouldn't have a balance sheet dated one date and a P&L date at a different date. So I'm sorry, that's the accountant in me. You're a banker used to handling the cash. No, I totally, <laughs> t t totally agree. Uh, what we try to do is, because she doesn't reconcile, it's almost 30 days after the fact before the statement's reconciled. So we ask her to generate the balance sheet and the P&L uh, the Friday before the Finance Committee meeting. So we have the most, most current, current. That's fine. Uh, statement. Mm -hmm. But uh, actual reconciliations of the uh, monthly statements are almost 30 days past due. Right. So this gives the board a more current picture. And that, that does make sense when you're the ones that are looking at your, particularly from a cash flow standpoint. Yes. But when it comes to us, it kind of needs to match, at least in my I opinion. totally agree with that. Okay, thank you. Bill, question. Bill, I mean, sorry, Kevin. Yeah, uh, Marty, maybe you're, you can answer this. Um, just as I read the um, balance sheet here, um, there's quite a lot. If you look at the uh, checking and savings, there's a lot more money from last year to this year, which is a good thing. W what kind of happened here? Is it the efficiencies that you've implemented or what? Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we haven't, we've been controlling expenses and this is more or less reserves, but this is too much in there. So we, the board approved transferring $100,000 of this into a separate money market account with um, Edward Jones. Mm -hmm. So that, that cash is in there. And we, we've been accumulating the cash because we haven't perfected the investment policy yet is how we're going to invest that. Mm -hmm. We're in our fourth draft. We have a task force assigned by the president uh, to come up with a investment policy. Uh, when that is, the final draft is in, we're going to submit it to the accounting firm okay. the city has hired mm -hmm. to do mm -hmm. the accounting. 
And then we also have a new board member who is a CPA. And that's going to be reviewed. Right. He's also on the Finance Committee, so that will also help us. And just a little procedure. I know typically, the, you know, it's very, um, um, for weddings, is very desirable, you know, wedding uh, facility. Is that, still, is that still ringing true? Yes. We're booked in through 2017 on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. And then Fridays and Sundays are the least desirable. And so... Uh, our chief operating officer has sales and bargains and mm -hmm. things that she does through the bridal show and other things like that to fill those dates. Okay. But the most popular dates for weddings is on Saturday. Bill? Okay. Oh, Thank sorry. you. Through? Right through. Yeah, I'm doing it. Thank Bill? you. Bill? Uh, I got a question. I noticed that uh, this past budget year you've uh, made a, ended up with a $48,000 carryover of revenues over expenses, is that way? Oh. Yes, the best of my remember, that's about what Compared it was. to a minus 5,000 some odd. The previous year, yes. Deficit. And the years before that, there was substantially larger deficits, if I remember. One year in particular, there was a huge, that was before I got on the board, there was a l large profit, I want to say, in 100. I just want to congratulate the board for taking this uh, and yeah. working it and getting it cleaned and that, up. And that question also refers to, I think, I can't remember who about the large amount of money. Because we didn't have an acceptable, in my opinion, acceptable investment policy, some of those profits from the year, year before have remained in the cash position, but we're getting close to doing that. Okay. Thank you. You through? Move to receive and file. Uh, wait, hang on oh. one second. Have you had a chance to read our financial statement from our auditor this yet? Yes, sir. And there's some suggestions in there on how to improve uh, different procedures yes sir oh good because you'll I'm sure you'll take that to heart <laughs> actually those are suggestions your suggestions are those yes. are yours well good we had a we, management letter from the auditors I yeah see. we got a management letter from the auditor yeah yeah we got that what we had requested has never happened before the finance committee requested an exit interview with our auditing firm and we had some questions throughout the course of the year as we were redoing the budget and mm -hmm dual control, depreciation, all those. So everything that's on those management letter from the CPA firm were questions that the Finance Committee arose and get answers to. Good. It'll improve, your, improve a lot as far as your... I have to follow yeah. up on that. You're telling me that our auditors never met with the board as when they finalized your audit? To my knowledge, no. But, you know, I've only been on a couple of years. But they have not met with the board since I've been here. Nor have they met with management. I met with the city. To my years, years, years ago. Yeah, I asked the city. Uh, may I ask the city manager? Um, did the auditors discuss the audit with with our staff? A nonprofit, they should be meeting with your board. It should be presented to the board, and that's what's bothering me a little bit here. We certainly can follow up with uh, White Nelson Dale Evans, who has performed the audit. Um, I find it a little difficult to believe that they did not meet in an exit interview format. So I will yeah. certainly concur and, and speak with Bob on tomorrow, and then forward. The information back Would to you the do that? Thank you. With all so the changes. Doesn't, you need to, I'm sorry, but you need to have that because well, you absolutely. need to have that feedback and you can't correct things if you don't know what the problem is. That's so. why they did it this year. Yeah. And that's why you've got a great well, feedback. We've gotten management letters in the past. Well, that's I, why you have a great feedback right here. I'm sorry, I had the floor. We, we've had management letters in the past, but you have, I, I'm assuming then you, you never got them? Is that what I'm hearing? They were delivered to the board, but there was no discussion on it t t since I've been on the board. Okay. Ronnie, would you follow up on that as well to see what's where they've landed? Yes, there have been management letters. There's yes. not a management letter issued uh, as there was this year with, a, I believe it was three comments or three suggestions for improvement on mm -hmm. internal controls and some other things. In previous years, there may not be a management letter, but there has always been an exit from the planned audit. So mm -hmm. I will check on both of those things. It is to my knowledge, though, that when there is a management letter, that is communicated directly to the Board of Directors. So that's something that the Board of Directors receives directly from the audit. Mm -hmm. That's a part of the audit process. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Yes. I recall year, a number of years ago that the, the auditors did meet with the uh, Board. Mm -hmm. but, uh, they uh, have I, done it. I'm going back maybe eight or ten years or something like that. Mike, can I make There's a just a quick comment? Letters. Kevin? Yeah, I just want to um, thank you and your board members there for all the work that 
You do. I know it's uh, it's a lot of work, and I really appreciate your your efforts on that. Mm. Ranch looks great. Okay. Any other questions, comments? We got a motion. You have a motion. Go ahead. Receive and file. Motion receive and file. Any objections? Well, I asked Ms. Oh, you have a question. Go ahead. No, I don't have a question. I just wondered if you have any closing remarks before. Well, I just, uh, I think Marty talked a lot about the finances and our, our tremendous improvement, which I'm very pleased. And I, I told her outgoing president I was going to take credit for that, even though she was largely <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, but uh, the, the only other follow-up I had was uh, I, I, too, found it odd that uh, there wasn't a planned exit interview with the audit firm, so uh, Marty and I pretty much insisted on it, and we later somewhat um, found humor in, I'm not sure humor is the right word, but anyway, mm -hmm. we found it interesting that the, our issues that we brought to them and wanted some clarification other things, uh, unrelated business uh, income, some of those things, mm -hmm. all then appeared in the letter. So, the letter, yeah. which was fine because w we know that and wanted to get some direction, and uh, that was fine. We just thought it was interesting that, that mm. it appeared in that way after we had sat down with them. So, Maybe you were both of like mind. Right? Perhaps. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thanks, guys, for coming. I move to receive the report. We have a motion already. Need a second. We need a second. <laughs> I'll second. Okay. Please vote. Oh, we, can, we don't have we to don't vote on this, do we? No, we'll receive and file. We do? Well, we made a motion, so you should Okay, oh. we'll, please vote. That motion passes 5 to 0. So we still have.